So the validation phase here in the in the in the startup development phase is uh, framework. The formation we we have already covered. We have the module uh, and the content available on that. And the validation really is about focusing on now there should be the team in place, there should be resources in place to start working and executing in an efficient manner, uh, at least, uh, and, and with um, balanced skills to be able to do the necessary minimum things uh, on moving the, or creating the product and moving the validation forward. Uh, and, and basically, each of these stages uh, help to create freedom of not thinking the previous uh, phase anymore, just focusing on this validation phase and not yet needing to think the growth and scalability factors uh, too much. So it really helps to limit the number of things that, that, that need to be focused on. There's still a lot of things to do and a lot of things to focus, but there should be less than those that were already uh, accomplished in the in the past and not yet needing to worry too much of those that are coming. So this should help help also bring focus and, and efficiency that way. And in this development phase you can see the different uh, different uh, descriptions of what each of these states kind of kind of mean uh, in more detail as well. So the stages help give guided focus. Uh, it's a progress measure. Uh, the progress measure is very important to see that there is actual progress made and it's not just doing uh, different activities. And because it's about making balanced progress, it's not only to focus on product and customers because you also have to focus on team building, how to manage the customer service, how to manage the product development, designing new features, testing, validating, having enough resources for everything, and so forth. Uh, really help to build things in correct order. Uh, the correct uh, meaning that there's, there's never one optimal and this should not be taken too scientifically, but uh, there are certain mandatory things that like building a, build, building a, a tall building, you have to get the foundation right. If you just start building, you, it's okay, you can build a tent, you can perhaps build a small cabin, but if you really aim to something big, you, what you don't want to do is you invest a lot on top, and then you realize that some of the foundational things were totally off place. It helps to limit the amount of balls in the air at the same time, help you to kind of get freedom from not thinking too much of the other, other things, if you are specifically on, um, on, or when you are specifically on this phase, then it's focusing on uh, validation. This also helps to uh, not delay the hard stuff by just doing fun and easier things, because that's that's usually uh, what happens in the formation or ideation phase. It's, is, is to, to, to find the inspiration and, and do more of that. Uh, but when it, it's kind of the step between just having fun ideas and doing serious business, something needs to happen in between. But also, it's not to push the hard stuff later, because the more of those harder things or considered uh, necessary things later on, you can, the more you can cover those in the beginning, the less you will have those in the future. And also at, at this point I want to I want to highlight that uh, that as we covered on the formation phase, the material here is really aimed for those who are serious about building their ventures and they are really committed and they have high growth growth ambition and they are doing this more as a as an exercise to really succeed instead of just trying to see if they're lucky to hit an idea lottery and something catches, catches on. That's okay as well. There are just different things that you can, you can try to be lucky uh, by design or you can just design 
things in the order that that um, that makes sense and solve kind of progress or individual challenge one by one and by that way make progress uh, towards the markets and basically if there is no ability to grow then then that can be considered failure as a startup it may not be failure as a as a business it may become just a, a small business that continues organic growth or, or is, is good revenue for entrepreneurship uh, for individual or individual team and that's all okay but it can be seen if from for example if an investor joined and the aim was to really grow but then the company never grows from investors perspective it definitely is a failure uh, because that was not the target so anything be that beyond uh, or less than a target is, 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 is considered failure so the growth is a real key aspect here and this overall fastest is, is also that while again if, if, if building that tall building on unstable foundation you may see that someone looks like they're making a lot more progress and they're even getting further along but it doesn't really help if the whole building comes stumbling down uh, later on because they didn't have a good foundation whether they had a poor shareholder agreement or whether they have a totally wrong team set up um, or they had allocated their equity wrong whatever that may be the foundation may be poor same goes for the for the validation phase that if going too fast uh, to the scaling phase and, and then the actual there is no validation um, that there is actual value and the market is not identified a lot of effort to the point that the whole company can fail may be put uh, because of because of uh, skipping steps in between we have one question by Ricardo okay um, for corporate internal incubation of new ideas in big companies, um, is the stage framework valid without modifications? Um, I, I would say that when, <clears throat> when, when it's about internal innovation, there's, I, I would say this module specifically uh, that focus on product and uh, the business model and so forth is probably uh, the most useful module on its own uh, because this focus on, on most traditional things uh, when it comes to what we know about startups which is that they build innovations, they build products and so forth uh, and less about the team structure itself. The formation phase is specifically a lot about how to build the foundation and the team and the beginning of the organization. So this module focus much more on product and innovation and not so much on the organizational side. We cover a little bit of that as well at the end. Um, so out of the modules, I would say this probably is most useful for the R&D departments of a big company. Uh, the next one uh, is also more relevant in how to grow that, uh, but then that also brings the organization again because as we know, startups don't have organizations to start with and they don't have organization to, to support the growth. So that's why those elements are covered, but not so much in this module. Thank you. Okay. Um, so with that note, um, as, as we know, there's two key aspects what startups need to do compared to just innovation alone. So startups have to build both the idea into product, into working business, and also bring from talent to co-founding team and a growing effective organization. Both of these need to be built and they need to be built in a, in a balanced manner. So this is the overall picture and so both building the innovation and then also the the team. Um, but now when we have gone through the formation, basically it means we have enough of the team to execute the, the, the focus on creating the product and validating the product 
before needing to scale the organization again. And uh, when we look at basically the, the support landscape in any ecosystem through this phase, also in this phase there are now good overlap of public services and private services and private interest uh, specifically this phase and it's partly because now the, the usually the, the startup is already identifiable they have at least some kind of website a domain some kind of presence they have people to contact they have people who are you know uh, meeting other people pitching in events and so forth so there's um, much more now uh, also potential to start building connections and relationships and also uh, hopefully with formation done properly then there is also some kind of cred credibility at least uh, to communicate as well uh, on that side and at the same time the public services this depend on, on each different city or country depending on how much private services have developed already or how much public services have developed uh, it, it varies of how far these, these go but this is this is kind of the, the dividing moment uh, between many things where, where there's a certain movement away from just the idea world and having fun with ideas into getting into more serious but preparing well and getting many things in order before starting to, to really scale the business further and start making uh, bigger investments as well. So validation, all about building, measuring and iterating. So it's, it's really about defining what the target is. So, so if we look at this validation cycle, uh, to be able to validate, you need to have a target, a known target that you can check did we hit that target or did we not hit that target? So if we take from the definition of innovation itself, we need to prove that we are generating value with that product or service, and we need to be able to identify to whom that value is created and how are we creating that value, or how, and also how we are capturing that value. So if we take from the formation phase where there was a lot of focus on what is our vision, what is our mission, so the mission statement should already include that we are delivering this type of value for this type of customers. So now it's all about then creating a product or service that actually delivers that and then finding through more detailed uh, uh, information of how that, actually, how that actually happens. So you need to have the targets that you start to define and kind of collect out of that, that mission, vision and roadmap from the past. And then you need to have KPIs where you measure the activities that you do in actually executing those activities of, of trying to get to the target or individual smaller targets. <clears throat> so you need to have targets to see whether you hit them. You need to have KPIs for activities where you are trying to hit the target so you can measure your effectiveness of, of executing towards uh, those validations. So when you have the targets and KPIs, now you can measure, evaluate and learn. So you can measure, are you successful, unsuccessful? Is individual items like true or untrue? Uh, have you, how effectively were you able to test something? Can you improve to make it more effective next time? And you can track those things. Uh, and it's all about learning and this is also one of the very important reasons why there needs to be a team that get quickly multiple perspectives to attract uh, extract as much learning as possible but to have a small enough team to be doing that effectively uh, to, a, to be able to make conclusions and also then, then, um, then make uh, uh, effectively the changes uh, quickly and understand what the changes were, what should be different, what is now different, what are we testing differently. And of course it's about building the product or rebuilding the product or iterating the product uh, or 
pivoting, which basically means changing the customer customer segment or customer subsegment or changing the, the whole market uh, in, in some way. So basically that would mean also refining the, the mission and the vision. So, uh, but the whole point here is that that if there are no things to work on, if there are no things to change, if there are no measures in place, it is very much impossible to see are we doing any progress? Are we just doing things, but we are climbing on the wrong hill? Are we doing a lot of things, but we are actually not making any progress because there is no targets? Uh, are we inside our strategy? Are we executing with our values? And, and, uh, and so forth. So this is important why those guidelines from the formation phase should be already in place and helping them to kind of work inside a smaller box. But now inside that box we need to make it work. This is also a, a, a very uh, kind of the area where a lot of companies die and that's a good thing if, if, if there isn't ability to live. Uh, so because the further you would go and then die, so again building that uh, building on top of a bad foundation, the, the more it costs. It costs in the form of uh, lost time, it costs more if there's more money invested and so forth. So it's, it's a positive thing if things die early, if they're not supposed to live. But of course, that's not the target. And the target is, is that you have, as much as you have a commitment, as much as you have dedication, passion, and commitment with the whole team, um, you can keep doing this for as long as you find the validation, um, if you have uh, structured it correctly. Uh, but usually, uh, it, it, it then basically comes to a common sense at some point, whether it, whether there's energy to continue or just rebuild the whole thing again or take a breath and come back to it later or make a, make a very big pivot. So if we look at from the statistics perspective, uh, this is the, the kind of the area where uh, if we think that it starts from these are just the uh, numbers mainly to see the funnel. If we start from a, uh, a 40 company uh, already between those who can create the product and start the validation, a significant number of teams actually evaporize. Usually it's because they didn't actually do the foundation uh, or the formation part. They, di they didn't have enough um, energy to focus on that part and, and, and skipping steps. Or it's simply that these answers start to come very quickly that there is no uh, there is no uh, potential there, or there the team is not balanced, or, or, or it's done by design that we'll just try this one idea, and if that doesn't fly, then let, let's forget it. So the commitment wasn't for long term, uh, and so forth. But also getting to growing startups, and this doesn't mean that all of those companies disappear. It also means that they are they get stuck with that certain level uh, of progress that they they basically are staying as a as a small company. Maybe they find something to convert into a consulting business, but not a scalable product or service. Or, or maybe they got a, a, a nice product, but the market wasn't big enough, so it doesn't really make sense to scale. Maybe it became a, a, even a national success, but never an international one, uh, and so forth. So it doesn't mean that all of the companies disappear. Also, even if there's money and time spent, um, you can also consider that specifically as a first-time entrepreneur or being uh, in a first-time team, that these are certain uh, costs of learning, a cost of education to be earned. And, and it's a valuable education that you can learn regardless of the business failure, uh, much more so than oftentimes even uh, available in educational institutes because practice is very different from theory. Um, so this is just a more kind of a statistical view into this. 
Before going to, to the next step, uh, I want to spend time now uh, because I, I mentioned about the, the, the having the foundation right. So it's good to kind of recap what should have happened on the on the formation phase and what assets and what things should be in place to actually be able to focus on this validation phase. Because it's very hard to do this validation phase if, you do, if you're missing some of the components that are expected to be ready. And also that if someone is only consuming this module, you may be missing that, okay, but why aren't these topics covered here when they should be here? At least that they may be in the past module or they may be in the uh, next module. And there's a, there's a logic of dividing this this way. Co-founder team with the entrepreneurial attitude, skills, and resources required with aligned vision, mission, strategy, and balanced ownership. So it's a very simple thing. If there is no team that have skills and have resources to execute, mainly time, even if it's part-time, you have your daily job and you do part-time as a team, but you need to have someone who can design and create, ideate, and, and someone who can build the product or have channels and resources to get the product built. And you have someone who can work with customers and design the customer interface, the messages, the communication, the sales, and so forth. If you don't have these resources available, then you can't do the validation. You can't design the product, you can't build it, or you can't you can't communicate with customers, you can't do the validation. And if they are not committed, or if they don't have skills, like even if there's team members, but some skills are missing, it's, it's, it's basically makes this process very, very difficult. And then most importantly, if you don't have aligned vision, mission and strategy and the values, uh, basically then the ideas that you can come up with for a product or service, the concept, the market you are trying to validate, it gets too big. So you should already have, together with the team, have a refined area of, of what is your battlefield, that you are working inside this battlefield uh, to focus on the validation. And you move outside of that um, if you have to, but then you have to also refine your vision and mission. But you should have these as your guiding tools. If you don't have these as guiding tools, the validation becomes much bigger effort. And if you don't have resources, then you can't combination of too vague or too big of a field with not enough resources makes it even that much harder. And, and with this, um, also, the balanced ownership is key in the sense that, that you should, depending on the time allocation and so forth that we covered on the previous modules, that the ownership should also reflect the effort that needs to go through in actually finding this innovation. So it's not just that there's one idea guy who has a lot of uh, ownership. It's very hard to get committed resources to join with that because there's not, not real innovation yet. There is no value proven. Um, so, so these are these are key things. Also, the shareholder agreements should be in place uh, with clear and agreed IPRs and the ownerships. Uh, basically, this is the protection and the security for everyone for continuing giving their effort and resources. That I have my rights and I have my obligations, and through those, I earn my ownership of this venture that we're building. And also then if someone doesn't execute that, then there's a protection for all the other shareholders in regards of replacing that team member and not get the equity lost because they never delivered on what they promised and so forth. Uh, there should be prioritized idea worth customer testing. So as much as you can validate at much more theoretical level, and we covered the concepts there earlier, the, the more you should do that before going into actual building, even the, building the MVPs that we covered in this module, uh, 
before moving into that. Because you should try, you, you should you should do research uh, as much as possible, but not but only for that level. When it comes to doing research and then starting making claims based on the research that the product works, that's not true. So that's why the validation is needed, and that's the balance between uh, finding enough of tools to refine the idea worth testing to the point so that also not all the effort and testing is spent only in building products but also on, on earlier level. Awareness of market timing. Uh, this is a very important part to know whether you are ahead of the market or you are entering a market following others or you are going to disrupt a, a mature market. And, and of course, an idea how this can be a scalable business model. So not just the product or service, but how can we make it really scale and, and through that make it a scale up uh, later on. So at this point, it only needs to be an idea. It doesn't, don't need to be validated because the whole scaling part is a next, next module thing. But these types of things you should have in place and if you don't have this then please focus and pay attention to the previous module but if you already have all of this then it's it's time to really forget the past uh, thinking and activities just taking the tools and the learnings from the, the formation phase and then clear your mind and focus on the validation part So if you're trying to skip the steps, then you are in the risk of that most common failure that startups hit, which is the premature scale. So it's as simple as that. There's a lot of statistics of that, of what is the most likely failure. So don't go for that failure. Just accept that there is certain things that, that you need to focus on and keep the balance uh, if you want to try to avoid that risk. So of course you can take whatever risk you want and you can work. There is no right or wrong in that sense. There are just statistical perspectives and there is knowledge and learnings by others. But as an entrepreneur, of course, you may find a unique way. But if if not, then you should at least learn the, all the other things and then think how you can make them better, how can you use them differently and so forth. And also just what is not in this, uh, this uh, module and what should be available once this module, uh, you, when, once you go past the for, uh, validation phase, uh, now you should have a validated team. So not only that you have the team and the shareholder agreement, but you have actually tested working as a team in practice, trying to solve something complex and uh, you should have a customer validated product. So whether that's a direct customer, indirect customer, you should now have the first product version uh, that is validated. You should have an initial business model in place, which is part of the validation. Again, uh, that there is value and how you capture that value. Uh, it's okay, you can still iterate, you can create multiple business models and you can continue playing with that and you can also of course develop the product further which you will but at least before you move the scaling you should have accomplished that you have actually a team that can can execute wants to execute is committed on executing you have the customer validated product there's customers who love your product they want to use your product you have a business model where either the customers pay for your product or someone else sees enough potential to pay for your product indirectly to make it available for your direct customers and you have a business model uh, to, to, to work with that and you have KPIs for growth identified. So you have measures in place now of what is, so basically reflecting from your vision and your milestones that were built in the previous models 
how do you measure your growth and then how do you what are the key performance indicators uh, for uh, making that progress what things do you focus on measuring so imagine fly, starting to fly a plane what are the, the the, the dashboard looking like, like what type of measures you should be looking at to be making sure that you are doing the right things in your business or for your business. 